Hello everyone and welcome to our third session of High Intermediate One. Uh, hope everything is just okay. Well, today uh, we'll be covering pages uh, six and seven and two pages of the magazine, that is pages 36 and 37. Let's just get started. Uh, could you please go to page 6, the listening activity? Here in exercise 3a, uh, we have some pre-listening questions. 3a, work with a partner and discuss the following questions. The first question, do you think all cultures use the same body language? Uh, well, you know, uh, there are different uh, body languages. Okay, for example, just a minute. Yeah, here. You see, uh, this is the OK sign. Yeah, OK sign. Uh, then this is the V sign, as you know. And of course, this is the OK sign, uh, the V sign, and the sum up, yeah, again, it, it represents uh, that something is fine. Uh, so these are some examples of uh, body language, especially in English. Uh, I don't think uh, in all cultures uh, they have the same meaning, you know, just uh, take the uh, thumbs up, for example. Uh, thumbs up in, in U.S. culture is something good, something positive. But when it comes to cultures like uh, ours, like Iranian culture, uh, it can be really offensive and rude to, to show someone your thumb. Okay? So depending on the cultures, uh, body language differ, so you need to watch out, to, to be careful whenever uh, you'd like to use body language. It can cause uh, lots of misunderstanding. Uh, number two, how would you describe your handshake? Uh, you know, handshake is typical, is customary in uh, Asian cultures, especially in, in our Iranian culture. Uh, for me, it is really important uh, to, to have a firm, a friendly, and a hearty handshake. You know, uh, it, it projects uh, a positive image. Sometimes, unfortunately, uh, some people's handshakes are uh, limp. Uh, it is not kind of friendly, it is kind of weak, so I don't think uh, it would project a positive image of the person. So I prefer uh, to have a firm and uh, hearty handshake. Number three, how do you feel when someone is talking to you without looking at you? You know, uh, it refers to making eye contact. Uh, well, when we make eye contact, we look at the person we're talking to. Uh, sometimes, uh, unfortunately, some people uh, just avoid uh, eye contact with other people. Uh, depending on the culture, of course, uh, it can be really rude. Uh, it might mean uh, the person is not interested or uh, they are not paying attention, the conversation is boring. But uh, if you ask me, I just try to make good eye contact, but I know I'm not so good at it, but anyways, I, I just do my best. Yeah. And do you move your hands and arms a lot when talking? Uh, you know, here in these pictures, you can see uh, here, for example, uh, 
we have a finger drumming. The guy is just drumming uh, his fingers. Or here, uh, you can see the man is just uh, using gestures. Uh, for me, personally speaking, I don't think I use uh, a lot of gestures. I don't use my hands and arms much. I do use some gestures, but uh, just enough, I, I suppose. Okay. Uh, 3B. Listening. Listen to a recording about body language and answer the question. You see there are six questions here. Uh, there is a note. A uh, number of the words in your answers should be the same as the numbers in the parentheses. For example, here in uh, question one, uh, what can be read from a person's body language? You see, the, uh, it says here two words. It means uh, you, you shouldn't use more than two words. Uh, your, your answer uh, must be at most two words. So please pay attention to the number of words in your uh, answer. So uh, before uh, I play the audio, could you please uh, check out the six questions, <clears throat> have a look. Remember, it's really important uh, to take a look at the questions before listening. Okay, uh, so let's see. Now, everyone, take a listen to answer the question.
Okay, that's it. Uh, well, uh, remember, uh, it's really important to take notes while listening. Uh, it can help you get the answers quickly. Uh, it can help you uh, uh, keep focused on the listening uh, audio. The questions. Number one, what can be read from a person's body language? Two words. So if you remember, uh, confidence and shyness. Uh, let me just uh, type the words here so that you can see the answers. OK, so here, everyone, number uh, one, confidence and shyness. Number two, what is the way one's eyes meet with other eyes indicate? Okay, what does it show? What does it represent? Three words. So the answer, confidence, interest, and honesty. Again, uh, let me just type the answers here. Yeah, here we go. Yeah. So, confidence, interest, and honesty. Number three, in what areas, in what parts it is normal, typical to stare at others on public transportation? You know, when you stare at someone, uh, you look uh, directly at them, maybe you're interested, you're surprised or something. So, in Eastern Europe, Eastern Europe. Uh, okay, Eastern Europe. Number four. What kind of people use finger drumming to show unhappiness in a situation? You see finger uh, drumming here. The guy is just drumming his finger. So what kind of people use it? Dominant people, yeah, dominant. You know, dominant means uh, showing that you are in charge. Dominant people. Number five, what's the first major signal that children learn to read? Two words, crossed arms, crossed arms. Uh, crossed arms, okay, and what feels like wagging an old fish around, so wag everyone means to move, so what feels like wagging an old fish around, two words, weak handshake, a weak handshake, okay, so the weak handshake. All right. Uh, part C. 3C. Listen again for details. Complete the sentences according to the recording. Then check your answers with a partner. Uh, again, everyone, I'd like you to play the audio uh, one more time at home. Uh, of course, remember to check out the sentences before listening one more time. Uh, listen for the keywords for the missing words here. And here are the answers. Number one, you can spot a bad day from a mile away as the two people sit their arms crossed. So the answer is, Spot. Uh, by the way, spot means to notice, to see something. And uh, arms crossed. Uh, let me see. I've got a picture here. Uh, let me just share it with you. Okay. So, arms crossed. Well, you can see the guy here, yeah, so 
to check out his arms. He's just standing there with his arms crossed. All right. So uh, it has different meanings in different cultures. Okay. Uh, number two. Uh, they say that the eyes are the window to the soul. The, win, uh, the window, the window to the soul. Again, uh, you can see the answer here. Number three. Uh, be careful not to overdo it. Don't do it too much. Good, strong eye contact is one thing a hard stare is another so uh, there is a world of difference between a good eye contact and a hard stare here are the answers everyone number four we fidget from time to, to, to time in a variety of different ways in a variety of different ways we fidget uh, by the way fidget uh, as uh, you may know means to move your hands to move your feet uh, especially because you are anxious you're nervous your mind is occupied or something number five Finger drumming is a loud and obvious message. It's a clear message. It uh, projects a clear message. It broadcasts, it shows, it tells us. So it shows your impatience or frustration across the whole room. Your impatience or frustration. You know, impatience is the opposite of uh, patience and frustration. When you feel frustrated, you're annoyed, uh, you feel desperate, you feel uh, hopeless. The answers again are here. Okay, uh, next one, number six. Number six. For a lot of people, it is subconscious subconscious in which case it is a sign of nerves nerves everyone here means uh, worried being anxious uh, being nervous and it is subconscious kind of hidden number seven however if your arms are crossed behind your back the meaning is reversed reversed everyone means opposite reversed number eight positive hand gestures include such things as rubbing your palms together palms uh, just a minute yeah uh, you know palms uh, are the, uh, this, 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 this part, uh, inside part of your hand. Okay, when you rub, you see, just take a look at me. When you rub your palms together, you do this, all right? I'm just rubbing my palms together, okay? Number nine, uh, there are many factors in a handshake. The pressure, the angle, what you do with your other hand. So the answers are pressure and angle, right here. Number 10. Copying from a bow shows dominance as you're trapping their hand between yours. So, dominance and trapping. Uh, so, dominance means, uh, again, as I told you, uh, being in charge, 
Yeah. And uh, when you track their hands uh, between yours, you're just uh, holding their hands between yours, right? It shows dominance. All right. Now, everyone, go to pages uh, 36 and 37. Let's see. Uh, Buckingham Palace. Uh, just a minute. Okay, we're almost there. Just uh-huh. Couple of more pages and oops. Oh my god. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So Buckingham Palace. Or uh, they call it just the palace, Buckingham Palace, or just the palace. Uh, as you may know, everyone, uh, Buckingham Palace or the palace is uh, the official home of uh, the British royal family, uh, and it is located in London. The name comes from a Tory politician. Uh, Tory uh, is related to the Tory party. Uh, it means the British Conservative Party. You know, uh, there are some uh, political parties in the UK, uh, such, a, such as uh, the Tory party, the Labour party. So uh, the name comes from a Tory politician. Tory politician uh, means uh, a member of the British Conservative Party or the Tory Party. John Sheffield became the Duke of Buckingham in 1703. So Mr. Sheffield. became the Duke of Buckingham in 1703. Buckingham is a place, uh, an area Uh, in the UK, the Duke, Duke means uh, a man with it's a high social rank, Duke. And uh, for a woman, we say uh, Duchess. Yeah, let me just uh, type it here for you. So, uh, Duchess, Duke and Duchess. Think of uh, Prince Harry and uh, his beautiful uh, wife, Meghan. Prince Harry is a Duke and uh, Princess Meghan is a Duchess. And he built Buckingham House as a place to stay during his visit to London. So, Mr. Sheffield used uh, the Buckingham House uh, to, to live in, to stay when he made uh, visits to London, when he just traveled to London. It was given the ultimate makeover and transformed into a palace in 1820 by an architect, uh, by architect John Nash. So, Mr. Nash was an architect. He designed and he planned uh, this uh, palace in 1820. And uh, this place, this palace, was given the ultimate makeover and transformed, 
changed into a palace. Uh, it was given, uh, it, they, they just made some changes, uh, they uh, redecorated it, uh, they made it more attractive, and they used it as a palace. Who was subsequently fired for going over his budget. Subsequently means later, then, after that, afterwards, fire. Remember in uh, I level, to fire someone, to ask someone, to give someone the axe, to give someone the sack, to dismiss someone. It was opposite of fire. And go over his budget means uh, he spent too much. He just splurged or he splashed out. Splashed out or splurged. So poor Mr. Nash uh, lost his job. He was fired because he spent too much. Uh, they work hard to keep it light. So they keep uh, they work hard to keep this palace light. Uh, opposite of dark. Well, the palace's 760 windows are cleaned every six weeks. Uh, there are 760 windows in the palace, and the janitors clean the windows once in every six weeks. So every six weeks means once in every six weeks. Okay. That fabulous ballroom was the first room to have uh, electricity installed in it in 1883. Well, a ballroom means uh, a large room for dancing and fabulous, fantastic, amazing, great. So what happened in 1883? Uh, they just installed electricity and the ballroom was the first room to have electricity in 1883. Lighting, uh, lighting, lighting was extended to the rest of the rooms over the next four years. So they extended lighting. It took four years. Uh, uh, to just extend lighting to the other room. So the first room that had electricity was the ballroom. And over a period of uh, four years, uh, all the other rooms had electricity as well. And there are now more than 40,000 light bulbs. Wow. So how many light bulbs are there? 40,000 light bulbs. Pass the step ladder. Pass the step ladder. Give me the step ladder. Uh, by the way, what uh, what is a, a step ladder? Just a second. I've got a picture. Okay. Uh, oops. That's this one. Oh God. This is a step ladder. Okay. So this is a step ladder pass me the step ladder give me the step ladder because there are lots of uh, uh let, let's say not lots of there are too many light bulbs uh they might be burned out and uh i need to maybe change change some of them okay uh now page 37 the house passed into royal hands in 1761. You know, royal means related to the family of a king or a queen. And uh, the house passed into royal hands. In 1761, uh, a king bought this house. He became the new owner. The, the new owner of... Buckingham Palace. Well, George the Third, George the Third, paid twenty-one thousand pounds—that is, 
21,000 pounds, that is 3 million pounds now, to buy it for his wife, Queen Charlotte, who gave birth to O, but one of their children, their 15 children, there. So, who got the house, who purchased the house, George III, uh, bought the house? How much did it cost? It uh, cost him uh, 21,000 pounds. And it was a gift for his uh, wife, for his beautiful wife, Queen Charlotte. Uh, they had 15 children. They had 15 children. And uh, 14 of them, 14 children, were born in this palace, in uh, Buckingham Palace. So, uh, all but one of their 15 children means 14 of them. 14 children were born there. She gave birth to 14 children in Buckingham Palace. However, Queen Victoria was the first monarch to name it as her official residence when she moved there after her coronation in 1837. However, but Queen Victoria, one of the queens of the UK, was the first monarch. Monarch, everyone, means a king or a queen. Monarch, a king or a queen. So she was the first queen to call it, to name it as her official residence. You know, residence means a house, a place where you live. When she moved there, so she moved to Buckingham Palace after her coronation in 1837. Uh, what is coronation? Uh, coronation, uh, everyone, means uh, the ceremony uh, in which uh, someone becomes a king or a queen. Okay, you see here uh, in this picture, uh, we call this coronation. So, a ceremony in which someone becomes a king or a queen. We call it coronation. Uh, and uh, when did it happen? In 1837. And the last part, it's easy to tell if the queen is home. You can easily find out if the queen is home. Just look at the flag, you know, flag. Each country has a flag. The palace flies the union flag when the queen is not in. So when the queen is outside, uh, the palace, Buckingham Palace, flies the Union flag. I'll tell you what Union flag is. Just wait a second. I have some photos. And the royal standard, when she is. When she is means when she is in the palace. So, they fly the Union flag when the queen is outside, when she isn't in the palace. And they fly the royal standard when queen is in the palace. You might also spot the ladder. Spot the ladder. Spot means notice, see. Uh, the, uh, the ladder one, that ladder one. Okay, uh, ladder one means the second one. The second one here means uh, the royal standard. The royal standard. So you might also spot the royal standard fluttering from Victoria Tower you know flutter when uh, a flag flutters in the wind it makes a gentle movement fluttering uh, from Victoria Tower at the Palace of Westminster so uh, the Victoria Tower is at the Palace of Westminster. This signifies the Queen is in Parliament. This shows 
this represents the queen is in parliament. Now, uh, the pictures I told you about. Uh, okay, so this one, everyone, this is the royal standard. The royal standard, one of the flags in the UK. This one is the union flag. The Union flag. It is the uh, national flag of the uh, UK. The Union flag, or they call it a Union Jack. Uh, then uh, this is a step ladder. Uh, we have the coronation here, and yeah, you see this is a flag and flutter. You know. Uh, when uh, a flag flutters, as I told you, it makes some uh, gentle, nice movement. Well, this one, everyone, this is uh, the Palace of uh, Westminster. The Palace of Westminster. Here, this one, yeah, it is a Victoria Tower, and uh, as you can see, uh, the flag is right here. So. This is the Palace of uh, uh, Westminster. Well, page seven, please. Grammar box two, subject verb agreement. Uh, everyone, agreement means using a singular verb after a singular or uncountable subject, and a plural verb after a plural subject. We call this agreement. So when the subject is singular, the verb should be singular, and uh, just the opposite. When the subject is plural, we, we need to use a plural verb. Number one, when the subject is complex, the following verb must agree with the main noun in the subject. So, main noun. Uh, what is a complex subject, by the way? A complex subject uh, includes both a noun or a noun phrase or uh, some other words and phrases that we use to describe the subject. We call it a complex subject. For example, increased activity in these areas suggests increased stress. Well, check out the verb here, increase, uh, suggests. Okay, as you can see, our verb is uh, singular. So why is that? If you check out the uh, complex uh, subject here, the main noun, as uh, mentioned here, the main noun is activity. So, since activity is singular, everyone, we need to use a singular verb. Second example. The results of a test taken by the British nanny, Louise Woodward, to support her plea of not guilty of killing a child in her care were not admitted as evidence at her trial in Massachusetts. Again, uh, we have a complex subject. Complex subject. If you pay close attention, uh, the uh, main noun in our subject is results. Since results is plural, our verb, that is were, needs to be plural. So, were agrees with the noun, the result. Next one. Uh, the period of time between the last word of an investigator's question and the first word of the subject's response is known as response latency. So, a long and a complex subject here. Uh, as uh, you can see, the
the main noun here is the period of time period of time singular or plural of course singular the, which means our verb should be singular is okay. next part number two if the subject is a noun clause or a gerund construction or an infinitive construction so a gerund construction or an infinitive construction we usually use a singular verb uh, what is a noun clause everyone uh, noun clause is a dependent clause uh, which acts as uh, a noun uh, everyone, noun clauses in English usually begin with uh, words like uh, how, that, what, when, where, whatever, whom, why, who, which, and etc. So, a noun clause which acts as a noun. A gerund construction means uh, the ing form of the verb, we call it a gerund, and an infinitive construction, a uh, two plus verb. So, remember, when our subject is a noun clause, when it is an uh, ing construction, or when it is two plus a verb construction, uh, our verb is usually singular. Uh, here are some examples <clears throat> uh, to keep these people uh, these young people in prison is inhuman 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 means very cruel our verb is uh, which is singular why you see to keep these young people in prison it is an infinitive construction an infinitive construction second example having overall responsibility for the course means that I have a lot of meetings what is our subject here having overall responsibility for the course what type of subject is it it is a gerund construction so the verb should be singular means is singular everyone next one whoever took them remains a mystery whoever took them remember it is a noun class noun class so we've got a noun class subject here which means our verb should be uh, singular uh, now some other example for example uh, we say uh, watching uh, English movies is my favorite uh, hobby watching English movies is why is because we have a gerund uh, construction uh, to smoke or smoking <coughs> Weakens your heart. Weakens makes weak. So why weakens? Because we have two smoke or smoking, which are uh, gerund or uh, gerund and infinitive construction. All right. And the last part. Singular subject plus phrase uh, plus singular verb. Plural subject plus phrase plus plural verb. By the way. By phrase here we mean these words, yeah? in addition to, as well as, along with. In addition to, as well as, along with, they have the same meaning. Uh, they mean besides, they mean together with, they mean and also, and also. Remember, uh, when uh, the subject is singular, I mean the first subject is singular, and we have one of these phrases uh, our verb should be singular too and when the subject is plural and we have one of these phrases our uh, verb should be plural in short 
to put it in a nutshell, uh, when we connect two subjects using these phrases, using in addition to, as well as along with, besides, together with, uh, our verb agrees with the first subject. The verb agrees with the first subject. Example, Tom, as well as Mary, was invited to the party. The subject, uh, the verb is was. Why? You see, Tom, our first subject, because it is singular, the verb should be singular. So, Tom was invited. Next one. The students, as well as, or in addition to, or along with, the committee member are excited. Why are? You see, our first subject is the student. So it means the verb should be plural. Another example. Uh, California, in addition to, or as well as, or along with, or together with. So California, along with Florida and Hawaii. So, so everyone, should I use is or are? California, along with Florida and Hawaii, is among the most popular U.S. tourist destinations. Destinations. Why is? Because California is the first subject and it is singular. So, uh, so easy. Just a little uh, attention. Micro practice. Choose the correct word. Number one. The people who listen to that music are few. Why are, you know, our subject the people? Remember, everyone, people in English is always plural. Uh, we have people, the police, clothes, fish, uh, cattle. They are always plural in English. People, police, clothes, cattle, and fish. Always plural. Number two. The team captain, as well as his players, anxious. Anxious means nervous, worried. You see, we have as well as two subjects connected with as well as. Remember? The first subject. Because the team captain is singular, so the correct answer should be is. Number three. The book including all the chapters in the first section is boring. Why is? Because uh, our subject is the book, one book, it. Number four, the woman with all the dogs walks down my street. So who walks? The woman. The main subject is the woman, everyone. The woman walk okay the woman walk uh, number five the analysis of the results reveals a significant difference between the groups so the analysis of the results uh, what is the main subject here the main subject is the analysis so it means uh, our verb should be uh, singular reveals uh, uncover show something number six the material that was applied to the blades of wind turbines ages or age rapidly in test rapidly means fast quickly so we have a uh, complex subject here. The main noun is the material and because material is singular we need to choose ages. Seven. Uh, the percentage of correct responses as well as 
the speed of the uh, the speed of the responses significantly increases yeah increases with patient so the percentage and increases number eight reading comics we have uh, a, a gerund uh, construction here reading comics doing something so reading comics is her favorite thing reading comics is her favorite thing and the last one number nine strategies that the teacher uses so who uses the teacher uses what does the teacher use the teacher uses strategies so the teacher uses strategies or strategies that the teacher uses to encourage classroom participation include why include include refers to strategies so the teacher uses some strategies and these strategies include using small groups and clarifying expectations well uh, this is it this is the end of another episode uh, uh, another session of uh, high one hope uh, you enjoyed uh, our class well everyone wish you all the best uh, 